Hello and welcome back to Vector Web Graphics in Photoshop. Now traditionally Photoshop has been used as a photo editing tool, a tool for editing raster graphics. Graphics that if you try to resize them or make them larger, they're going to get messy, they're going to look blurry, they're going to look pixelated. But photographers aren't the only ones who use Photoshop. A lot of web designers, myself included, use Photoshop on a regular basis for their design comps. And when I was first learning Photoshop, I would find myself designing a layout, designing some buttons and some icons, and then discovering that maybe those buttons or icons weren't quite the right size and I needed to make them larger. So I tried to make them larger and it just pixelated everything and it looked really bad. So I had to start over from scratch. So what I want to focus on in this course is creating vector graphics in Photoshop so that we don't encounter that same problem. So that when we create a button or an icon, we can resize it as large as we want to and it will retain its quality. So we're going to look at creating some vector graphics. Now before we get into any of our specific graphics, I want to talk about the basic vector tools that we have available to us. Now the first and most obvious are our shape tools. And those are found a little over halfway down our toolbar on the left. And by default, my rectangle shape is selected. But if we click and hold down on that, we get this flyout menu with other shape tools. So we have a rectangle tool, rounded rectangle, ellipse, polygon line, and custom shape tool. All of these tools will create vector shapes. Shapes that you can resize, shapes that you can edit in any way and they will retain their quality. They will stay nice and crisp. They won't get pixelated as you resize them. So let's create a new Photoshop file, and it's just gonna be a simple file. I'm gonna leave it at 500 by 500, click on OK. And in order to create the shape, we just select whichever shape tool we wanna to use, and then we have some options up here at the top. And we're gonna spend a lot of time going through these options as we create some of our web graphics. But close to the far left edge, in this particular drop down where we see shape selected, we can click on that to create either a shape, a path, or pixels. If we choose pixels, then we're no longer creating a vector shape. We're creating a raster shape. So we're going to stay away from using pixels in this course. We're going to use shapes. We're also going to stay away from using paths. Using paths, we can create the basic outline of a shape, but that outline, that path, doesn't have any visual characteristics to it. It doesn't have a stroke or a fill color. It's just a path, an outline of a shape. So we're going to focus on creating shapes with our shape tools, and this will create vector shapes for us. Another section we'll focus on a lot are going to be the fill and stroke options, where we can change the fill color, the stroke color as well as the stroke thickness, stroke type. We can change our stroke to dotted lines or dashed lines, and we can also change the way that our strokes are applied. We can also set the width and height of our shapes using these text fields here. Now usually we'll just end up dragging a shape out and eyeballing it, but if you know exactly how large you want your shape to be, you can use these two text fields to enter in your exact width and height. Then to the right of that, we have some more complex vector specific options here uh, that can really help us when we start drawing some more complex shapes. And I'll go ahead and show you some of the basics of that right now. So right now, next to the height text field, we have this drop down where we have a little square here. And if we click on that drop down, we see the, the drop down menu and we see a few different options here. Now, by default, when we create a new shape, it's going to create it on a new layer. That's what that square icon means. However, if we've already created a vector shape and we're now about to draw our second one, then these other options will show up. It will allow us to combine shapes together to create complicated shapes. It will allow us to subtract a front shape in order to basically cut a hole in a shape you've already created. And we have a few other options here as well. And we'll get into these options in more detail as we move through the course, but I just wanted to show you those very quickly and show you how they work. So let's grab the rectangle tool. And for the fill, we'll go ahead and just randomly select one of these swatch colors. So I'll grab one of these dark red colors for the fill. I'm going to leave the stroke alone and let's just click and drag out to draw a shape. 
So you'll notice when I drew that shape, my properties panel opened up here and I'm using Photoshop CC right now. And with the latest versions of Photoshop CC, you'll notice that we have these live shape properties, things that we didn't have before. Before we could choose to create either a rectangle or a rounded rectangle. And once we created it, that's what it was. Well, now we can create a normal rectangle and then change the corners to round them off. So we can enter in a value of 10 here and you'll see that it rounds off the corners of our rectangle. So we're no longer stuck with what we originally drew. We can change those options after we draw them. I'm gonna go ahead and set that back to zero. So those live shape properties can be very, very helpful for us. You'll also notice that down here, we have some of the options that we saw up here in this dropdown with combining shapes, subtracting shapes, intersecting shapes, etc. So let's talk about some of those options. Let's say we wanted to create a complex shape where we need to combine two different rectangles together. Well, by default, if we keep the rectangle tool selected here and leave these options alone, when we create a new shape, watch what happens over here on our layer stack. We'll create another rectangle over here and you'll see that it creates a new layer for us. So these two shapes are being treated separately. And certainly there are times when that is helpful, when that is what you want to happen. However, if we wanted to combine these two shapes together, we'd have to do that a different way. So let's delete that and let's do it again. This time I'm gonna to switch to the ellipse tool. So let's say we wanted to combine a circle with this shape. So before I draw the shape, you'll notice I have the rectangle one layer selected. That's very important. We want that layer selected. And then we're gonna come up here to the top click on our drop down, and we're gonna click on combine shapes. So instead of creating a new shape on a new layer, it's going to combine our new shape with the current shape that's already selected. So let's click on combine shapes. And now when we click and drag out, I'm gonna hold on to shift so that it stays a perfect circle. But when we click and drag out and release, you'll notice in our layer stack that it did not create a new layer for us. Instead, it combined it and combine both of these shapes, that is, into one shape. Now you'll notice that we still have the paths for both of our shapes. Both of those paths are still separate paths, but they're now on the same layer, and they're now being treated like a single shape. Well, another option that we have when we combine multiple shapes into one layer is to subtract the front shape. This is used if you want to cut away a portion of the shape you've already drawn. So what we've done here is we've taken this front shape, which is this circle, we drew it on top of the rectangle, and the shape of that circle is cut away from the rectangle underneath it. Another option we have is to intersect shape areas, and that will reveal only the part of the shapes that overlap. Then we could do the opposite of that, the opposite of this intersect shape area by clicking on exclude overlapping shapes. And this basically gives us the opposite of an intersection. It cuts a hole out where the intersection was and it fills in everything else. Finally, we have one last option at the bottom of this list to merge shape components. Once we're done either combining, subtracting, intersecting, or excluding our shapes, once we have our layer set up like we want it to be and we know that we're not going to make any changes to the way that those shapes interact then we can click on merge shape components to make one shape out of this so this will make more sense if we go back to combine shapes so we've combined these shapes we want them to be treated as one shape but we don't want two separate shapes that we're editing here instead we want this to be one combined shape not two different shapes on the same layer so the way we achieve that is we come up here to this drop down and click on merge shape components and when we do that it'll ask us if we want to turn this live shape into a regular path i'm going to click on yes and all that means is we don't have the options to round the corners anymore things like that but as you can see it has now combined these two paths into one path not only is it treating it as one shape as far as the number of layers is concerned, but it's also combined those two paths into one path. And if we hit A to switch to our arrow tool, we can click on the path and see that it is just one path. So those are just a few vector options I wanted to point out. Obviously there's more. We have the pen tool, which allows us to subtract shapes or subtract vector points on our shapes, add vector points, 
etc. We can also draw a shape from scratch using the pen tool. And we'll talk more about the pen tool later on. But those are the basic shape tools we'll see ourselves using as we move forward. Now we'll also use some of the other tools in more detail later. We'll talk about the path selection tool versus the direct selection tool and how those can be helpful for us. But, uh, but that covers it for the basics of using these vector tools in Photoshop. So thank you for watching. And in the next video, we'll get started creating some of our vector web graphics in Photoshop.